Tony Pollard last year with uh, with Dallas, 252 rush attempts, 1,005 yards, uh, nine or six touchdowns on the ground, 55 receptions, 67 targets, 311 yards to the air, and zero touchdowns to the air. Thoughts on Tony Pollard? I don't mind Tony Pollard with what Tennessee's trying to redo with their offense, but what I'm concerned with about Tony Pollard is – I, I really think that him and Tajay Spears are basically going to 50-50 split this backfield. And so with that being the case, I think there's going to be some consistency that's lacking from Tony Pollard. Now, again, as a depth piece, I, I don't mind it. You know, coming off the board, RB29. Uh, I don't necessarily hate that. I think there might be, you know, a little bit of room for improvement off of there, but – uh, really holistically, I, I think it's kind of going about where he's going to end up, right? You're in a 50-50 split with an offense that's completely getting overhauled. You know, no more Derrick Henry. They brought in all these pass catchers. feels like a great best ball play with Tony Pollard, right? Because if it is a true 50-50 split, maybe there's a week where, you, you know, they ride the hot hand. Um, again, we're still kind of waiting to see what this Tennessee offense is going to look like, how he's going to slot in with this – um, Tennessee offense. Um, I think a lot of people uh, were, myself included, were kind of down on Tony Pollard last year, right? Because he, he was on such a high powered offense and it just, he didn't live up to the expectations of what I think a lot of people drafted him. But you look back at it and he had a pretty decent year, thousand yard rusher, um, found the end zone, just wasn't nearly as efficient as he was the two previous seasons. Um, with his opportunities. Um, so I think that that's, there's a little bit of recency bias that might spurn some people off of him. Uh, I think it is a risk new, new situation, but uh, he, I, I, I will echo what Kevin said in that it is a, a great depth piece. I think he's a perfect best ball candidate. Um, and certainly somebody that um, is, is intriguing. Yeah, really no other way to describe it. Just kind of a disappointing season last year, right? Like this was a guy that, you know, coming into it, you know, there was, there was a lot of chatter, a lot of talk, a lot of viewpoints in the fantasy community coming into last season that this would be a massive breakout year, massive, um, you know, upside type of deal because the seasons previous, it was always, it was Zeke that had, had eaten into that work and, and it cannibalized, you know, goal line type of work, red zone type of work. Um, you know, they were, they were splitting so many carries that it just didn't, mm -hmm. Uh, didn't you know showcase what he could really do as far as fantasy goes, and uh, he comes in last year certainly gets the bell cow type of role in Dallas, and uh, it just wasn't there, right? Like like the fantasy production was not there, and so this is one of those that, that Tony Pollard very well may be the uh, the guy that operates better when not having the full workload and, and being able to uh, split some of that that uh, workload and split some of that that timeshare. Um, with that as well, right? And we've seen that with other backs in the past. Uh, past that uh, that you know are are good at good receiving the ball out of the backfield uh, and and have a lot of burst and a lot of pop to him. And so this may be um, you know beneficial here for him this season with the uh, with kind of that split share in there. And I do think that Tony Pollard is going to still return some value, right, from where he's coming off the board currently.